In qualitative evaluation, there are five, many, uh, five key principles. Number one is called the principle of trade-off. What you start with first is to ask yourself, does my sampling design support the inquiring question? If your answer is yes, then you have a trade-off between the breadth, the, the breadth and the depth, between time and the resources available. That's principle number one. Principle number two is the inverse proportion between the amount of data, usable data, the key word here is usable data, and the number of uh, participants. Is that translates into principle number three? When you obtain a large amount of usable data per participant, then a few number of interview or participant is required. Usually, uh, an average, a suggest, a recommended average is between six and ten. Principle number four: When you collect a small amount of data on a large number of participants is required. So you collect a small amount of data per participant, then a large number is required. Yeah. And then principle number five, when you conduct two and three unstructured interview with uh, a moderate amount of data and moderate depth per participant, then uh, an average of uh, 20 to 30 participants is recommended. I just want to point out that you want those numbers are not ironclad that you have, those are you have to do. Those are guidelines that can be modified according to the evaluation at stake. That also brings me to a point where you have to educate the stakeholders, especially the donors, about this number. Yeah. Donors will ask you, is that enough? Are those six, if you, you select six cases, is that enough? And you have to educate them and tell them that case selection in qualitative sampling is have a different logic than quantitative. That six out of 10,000 may be very well enough if he answer the inquiring question. There are seven key principles for quantitative evaluation. Number one is the objective. What are you trying to do? Are you trying to estimate a single proportion? Are you trying to estimate, compare two proportions, compare two me? Number two is the level of precision that you desire of the margin of error. Is it 3%, 5%, 4%, 10%? Number three is the acceptable level of confidence interval, or conversely, the type one error. And usually in practice, you have a 95% confidence or a 90% confidence interval. Number four is the desired power that you want, usually 80% power. Number five is the design effect. In our survey, in the work that we do in evaluation, it will usually be a two-stage cluster sampling or three-stage. Now, how does compare to the gold standard who is simple random sampling that will give you the depth? Now, number six is the response rate of a non-response that you factor, and number seven is the population size. Now, I, I intentionally mention number seven at the end to let you know that in quantitative evaluation, the population size matters. But this is not the case in qualitative. The dry population size is one of the drivers in quantitative. And mo most of the time, donors and stakeholders will have a confusion about this principle in quantitative and want to apply it in the qualitative. So it's again our job as an evaluator to educate them that 
They are two different ball game, and the drivers in one case is not the drivers in others. 